There are thousands of volcanoes in the world, and each one is different from the others. On the surface of the Earth, a volcano looks like a mountain or a huge pile of dirt with a vent or cone. Scientists are terrified of the potential of these enormous undersea supervolcanoes, which seem set to wreak havoc on humans. Which underwater volcanoes are the largest in the world, and are these enormous volcanoes poised to erupt? What would be the catastrophic result of such eruptions? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. Getting to know them Underwater volcanoes also go by the moniker of submarine volcanoes. Underwater or submarine volcanoes are lava erupting fissures that are mostly buried beneath the Earth's oceans. Underwater volcanoes operate in a manner that is very similar to that of their surface-based counterparts. Deep within seas and oceans, mainly in the Pacific Ocean, underwater volcanoes are most frequently observed. Some of them can also be found in shallow waters. How are they formed? In order to understand how these underwater volcanoes are produced, it is imperative to first understand how land volcanoes often occur. The mantle, the core, and the outer crust are the three layers that make up the Earth. The main component in the development of volcanoes is the mantle, which is composed of molten rock and gas called magma. A volcanic eruption is very likely to happen when the mantle is under a lot of pressure, especially along fault lines, which are weak places, gaps, or cracks within the crusts of the planet. During an eruption, lava rises through these fissures made of the molten rock found in the Earth's mantle layer. Underwater volcanoes form in a manner that is quite similar to that of terrestrial volcanoes. Although it is unknown how many undersea volcanoes there are worldwide, researchers believe that there are thousands of them scattered throughout the waters. Today's largest known underwater volcano is the Tamu Massif. In the northwest Pacific Ocean, this volcano is about 1,600 kilometers, 990 miles east of Japan. Tamu Massif covers an area of 553,000 square kilometers, or 214,000 square miles, and is situated at a depth of around 6,500 feet or 1,980 meters below sea level. This subaquatic volcano rises to an astonishing height of about 14,620 feet, or 4,460 meters. According to research, the Tama Massif is believed to have started sometime between the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous, 145 million years ago. The most recent eruption time of the Tama Massif is still largely unknown. One more of the world's largest underwater volcanoes is the Gardner Pinnacles. The section of this volcano may have seen from underwater surface like the Tamu Massif. What's surrounding Italy? When we think about Italy's volcanoes, we may assume that Vesuvius, which is famous for destroying Pompeii and Etna, which towers over Sicily, posed the biggest threats to the country's residents and tourists. Another monster located in Marsili, just 175 kilometers or 110 miles south of Naples, may likewise pose a threat to the southern peninsula and its islands. Marsili is a true giant, standing 9,800 feet tall with a base measuring 70 kilometers by 30 kilometers by 43 miles. It is by far the largest active volcano in Europe, yet you can't see it because its peak is 500 meters, 1,640 feet, under the surface of the Tyrrhenian Sea. Scientists have been aware of Marcelli's presence for a century, but it has only been in the last 10 years that they have started to investigate any concerns that Marcelli might pose. Their findings are concerning. Recent calculations suggest that its activity might potentially cause a wave that is 30 meters high and 98 feet wide to strike the beaches of Sicily and Calabria. The fact that there would be little to no warning of the impending calamity would make matters even worse, which is motivating some experts to look for new equipment to monitor the Mediterranean's movements. It is an old threat. Tamu Massif can be compared in terms of sheer size, even if Marsili has a complex of a different independent volcanoes. However, Tamu Massif has disappeared whereas Marsili is still rumbling. There is more geological activity in Africa due to the proximity of the Eurasian and tectonic plates. In the worst case scenario, a landslip may be followed by a wave that would hit Sicily and Calabria in 20 minutes and be 20 meters tall and 66 feet wide. Along the arc of Sicily's north coast and southern Italy's west coast, it is merely one of numerous volcanoes. Some of them have been become landmasses, including the Aeolian Islands, which include Stromboli, Lipari, Salina, Filucudi, Alicudi, Panaria, and Volcano, which was named after the Roman god of fire and gave us the term for all such fractures in the Earth's crust. For every one of these islands that can be seen, ten underwater volcanoes are present. Marzili was formed around a million years ago, over the millennia, 
they gathered 80 eruptive cones that could all release lava, ranging from the north-northeast to the south-southwest. Due to its depth underwater, this potential time bomb that is located on the bottom of the Mediterranean in South Italy was only discovered a century ago. Even more recently than the finding of Marzilli is the growth of science's understanding of its operations. Only in the 2000s did in-depth investigations begin to appear in publications. These findings suggest that most recent eruption of volcano occurred a few thousand years ago. Today, all of its activity consists of gentle rumblings and low-intensity earthquakes with petrol fumes. This does not rule out a later, more dramatic return to life, and Marzilli can merely be nodding. If the seamount were to erupt once more, there is little possibility that this blazing belch will ever reach the ground or harm the locals because the lava and ash produced by the explosion would be absorbed by the 500 meters (1,640 feet) of water above the seamount. But the risk is greater from the possibility of underwater landslides than that of eruption itself. A tsunami would be created if one of its flanks were to collapse due to the explosion itself or the seismic activity that preceded it. We now know that the Aeolian arc of volcano subsea landslides may have contributed to earlier disasters. As an illustration, the poet Petrarch described a disastrous storm that devastated the Bay of Naples in 1343 and claimed hundreds of lives. According to a new analysis by Sarah Levy at the State University of New York and her colleagues, this could have been generated by a tsunami that originated on Stromboli. When analyzing archaeological data from the volcano, the scientists found proof of a previous landslide that was the reason why the tsunami struck the Calabrian shore. The more recent eruption of Stromboli in 2002 produced two tsunamis. Despite the waves only having an impact on the island and not the mainland, no one was killed by the surge. Unfortunately, we are unable to determine Marzilli's exact level of threat just yet. According to Glauco Galotti, a physicist of the University of Bologna, we simply don't have enough data but he adds that there are solid grounds for believing that it might be dangerous. One possibility is that the ongoing hydrothermal activity undermined the volcano's rocks. He adds that the micro-earthquake recordings demonstrate the continued churning of lava in the magma chamber, and we should investigate the possibility seriously for both of these reasons. If an eruption does take place, the death toll may change based on the season and whether the tsunami struck during peak tourist season. Although Marzilli is the largest volcano in Europe, her sisters could also pose a severe threat, as the Stromboli events have shown. It's vital to remember that the Therian Sea and Strait of Sicily contain at least 70 undersea volcanoes. Palinuro Volcano, which is 65 kilometers 40 miles off the coast of Silento, and whose history is completely unknown, is of significant concern. Galotti asserts that recent findings show the volcanic complex contains a loose debris layer that is 150 meters or 490 feet thick and might be displaced by seismic activity. Future surveys should ideally include greater details about the structure and its propensity to collapse. If the risk is great, the Italian government may need to take action to prevent the potential disaster. Although there is presently no trustworthy monitoring system in place to warn Italians of an impending tsunami, the Galotti building claims that it need not be a difficult task. He notes that the network of buoys equipped with motion sensors ought to be able to spot recognizable changes in the motion of the sea to signal the impending arrival of a tsunami. As a result, those in the impacted areas can get an automatic SMS notification, enabling them to leave for higher ground before the tsunami strikes. It might be possible to monitor the volcano's own motions, according to Ventura. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Aipe submarine volcano's eruption in 2022 set a record for the largest natural explosion in the previous century, surpassing all nuclear explosions in the U.S. The massive Krakatoa volcanic eruption near Indonesia in 1883 which took more than 36,000 people, is analogous to the Tongan volcanic explosion in the southwest Pacific, even though it only resulted in four fatalities. An explosion of this size can only be created by a hydrogen bomb. Nothing the ordinary person has ever encountered compares to this. Tsunami waves rose as high as 45 meters, 148 feet, on Tofua Island in Tonga, and reached 17 meters, 56 feet, on Tonga Tapu, the island with the most residents and the site of the country's capital. Nuka Lofa. The study also showed how, while still causing major damage, the wave might have been far worse. Researchers have found a number of records that were achieved during the eruption on January 15, 2022. This eruption produced a record-breaking volume of water vapor to be expelled into the atmosphere, which could briefly raise the temperature in the years to come. This amount was enough to fill 58,000 swimming pools. By sending 36 miles of ash into the atmosphere, 
It surpassed many scientists' preconceived notions that was a physically feasible and shattered the previous record of the tallest volcano plume observed by satellites. It generated the fastest eye waves yet recorded for Earth at 720 miles per hour, traveling at least six times around the globe. Despite the fact that this eruption was noteworthy and among the biggest since Karakatoa in 1883, others of a similar scale since then have happened, but didn't act in the same way. This circumstance is distinct due to the underwater volcano's role in the significant tsunami waves. The research team gained new knowledge on the underwater pyroclastic flows of the volcano, which are made up of hot, heavy volcanic ash, lava particles, and gas discharged by the volcano, by examining sediment debris around 80 kilometers offshore. Additionally, it was found that just two other volcanic eruptions, the 2015 Kolbuko eruption in Chile and the 2008 Kasatoki Island eruption in Alaska, emitted significant amounts of water vapor into the Earth's stratosphere. The Hunga Tonga Huanga Haipei volcano's crater was found to be 700 meters deeper than it had been before the eruption, according to NASA. Due to the multiple risks they present, such as rapid explosions, landslides, and long-term climate perturbations, volcanoes are extremely important to study. The ruins of Pompeii, Italy serve as a harsh reminder of the risks associated with living on or near one of the countless volcanoes that are active or that are apparently dormant across the world. Over 1,700 years ago, Mount Vesuvius nearly immediately smothered Pompeii's inhabitants in animals and ash. More recently, in 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted in Washington state, shredding more than 1,300 feet off the mountain's summit and causing an estimated $1.1 billion in economic losses, owing to fatalities, injuries, bridge devastation, and lost crops. Even seemingly dormant or inactive volcanoes can become deadly, among other factors. Midway through the 1990s, carbon dioxide and helium began seeping through the earth at Long Valley Caldera at the Mammoth Lakes area in California. The pollutants may possibly be to blame for some deaths and health problems among individuals, since they killed numerous trees in the area. Although volcanoes are known for their destructive power, they are also a significant producer of new planetary crust and a route for minerals to return from the planets deep to the surface. So what is your take on safety measures regarding volcanic eruptions? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.